Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for being here for this meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Carmel. Before we get started, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And Boy Scout Christopher Nealon is uh, here with us tonight to present his Eagle Scout project to the Town Board. And we're going to ask Chris to lead us in the pledge. Okay, Chris, so would everybody please rise? And Chris is with uh, Boy Scout Troop 371. Whenever you're ready, Chris. I pledge allegiance to the stand of the United States of America and to the Republic, for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Would everybody please remain standing and keep in your thoughts and prayers the troops of the armed forces of the United States of America that are fighting uh, both domestically and overseas to protect our freedoms and the liberties that we so enjoy. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Okay, once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here for this meeting of the Town Board of the Town of Carmel. Tonight's uh, Town Board meeting, we actually have two, two meetings tonight. The first meeting is the Town Board voting meeting. This is a special voting meeting that was announced. We have uh, six, five um, authorizing resolutions for settlement of litigation and one resolution in support of New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, regulation of natural gas and infra infrastructure facilities. For the record, all town board members are present this evening, as is Ann Spofford, our town clerk, all the way down here to my right. All the way down to my left is Greg Fulchetti. He's the Carmel Town Council. And Jimmy Gilchrist, our recreation director, is, is with us uh, this evening as well. So. Um, the, at the 7, 7 p.m. voting meeting is the first resolution is a resolution authorizing settlement of litigation. And Councilman Schneider, would you read resolution number one, please? Whereas there is currently pending in the Supreme Court, County of Putnam, State of New York, under index number 1536-2015 and 1170-2016, certain lawsuits entitled Jezebel Enterprises LLC versus the Town of Carmel regarding the tax assessments for the property known and designated Town of Carmel tax map number 44.14-1-13, and whereas a proposed settlement of the litigation has been negotiated by Glenn Drosy, Town Assessor, and Special Counsel Richard Lancato, both of whom have recommended approval of the proposed settlement. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the settlement of the aforementioned litigation as recommended and be it further resolved that Special Counsel Richard Blancato is hereby authorized to sign on behalf of the Town of Carmel the stipulation of settlement and corresponding consent judgment reflecting the terms of the settlement. I offer the resolution as read. Second. second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough, Councilman Lupinacci, roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lupinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. I should have mentioned these are certiorari settlements. This is where um, a property owner challenged the assessments on their property and uh, it went before uh, the Putnam County Supreme Court and it was settled through a litigation between the, uh, the applicant's attorney and the attorney for the town of Carmel negotiated the settlement. So that's what these are. There's actually one, two, three, four of them on for tonight. So when you hear these settlement and litigation, it's connected to certiorari challenges in court. Okay, next resolution number two, Susie McDonough, would you read that? It's an authorizing uh, settlement litigation as well. Sure. Whereas there is currently pending in the Supreme Court, County of Putnam, State of New York, under index number 1091-2016 and 500484-2017, certain lawsuits entitled Rifkin Group LLC versus the Town of Carmel regarding the tax assessments for the property known and designated Town of Carmel tax map number 55.11-1-1 and whereas a proposed settlement of the litigation has been negotiated by Glenn Drosy, Town Assessor, and Special Counsel Richard Blancato, both of whom have recommended approval of the proposed settlement. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the settlement of the, uh, of the aforementioned litigation as recommended, and be further resolved that Special Counsel Richard Blancato is hereby authorized to sign on behalf of the Town of Carmel the stipulation of settlement and corresponding consent judgment reflecting the terms of the settlement. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lupinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. 
Okay, next uh, social settlement, number three, uh, authorizing settlement. Councilman Lupinacci, would you read three, please? Whereas they're currently pending in the Supreme Court, County of Putnam, State of New York, under index number 1094 slash 2016 and 500492 slash 2017, certain lawsuits entitled Bittman <coughs> Uh, Mahopak LLC versus the Town of Carmel regarding the town assessment for the properties known and designated Town of Carmel tax map, tax map number 76.9-3-68.71 and 5005-2016 72, and whereas a proposed settlement of the litigation has been negotiated by Glenn DeRosey, town assessor, and the special counsel, Richard Blancada, both of whom have recommended approval of the proposed settlement. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of town of Carmel hereby authorizes the settlement of the aforementioned litigation as recommended, and be it further resolved that special counsel, Richard Blancada, is hereby authorized to sign on behalf of the town of Carmel a stipulation of settlement and corresponding consent judgment reflecting the terms of the settlement. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilman Borelli. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lupinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, number four, uh, Councilman Borelli, would you read uh, the settlement, please? Whereas there is currently pending in the Supreme Court County of Putnam, State of New York, under index number 500487-2017, certain lawsuit entitled Shalini Barnwall versus Town of Carmel regarding tax assessments for the property known and designated Town of Carmel tax map number 44.15-1-37. And whereas a proposed settlement of litigation has been negotiated by Glenn Drosey, Town Assessor, and Special Counsel Richard Blancato both of whom have recommended approval of the proposed settlement. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the settlement of the aforementioned litigation as recommended, and be it further resolved that Special Counsel Richard Blancato is hereby authorized to sign on behalf of the Town of Carmel a stipulation of settlement and corresponding consent judgment reflecting the terms of the settlement. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, second by Councilman Lupinacci. Roll call vote. Councilman Borelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lupinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Okay, next resolution, number five, is uh, not part of any uh, certiorari settlement of litigation. It is settlement of litigation, but it's not connected to any certiorari or tax challenges. So, Councilman Schneider, would you read five, please? So, resolution authorizing settlement of litigation, whereas there is currently pending against the Town of Carmel a certain claim lawsuit entitled Robert Erickson Jr. versus the Town of Carmel, and whereas a proposed settlement of the claim has been negotiated by Labor Council Jackson Lewis LLP, who has recommended approval of the proposed settlement. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Carmel hereby authorizes the settlement of the aforementioned claim as recommended, and be it further resolved that Town Supervisor Kenneth Schmidt is hereby authorized to sign on behalf of the Town of Carmel the stipulation and agreement of settlement, a copy of which is on file in the office of the town supervisor. I offer this resolution as read. Second. Okay, seconded by Councilwoman McDonough. Roll call vote, okay. please. Councilman Borelli? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Councilman Lupinacci? Yes. Councilwoman McDonough? Yes. Supervisor Schmidt? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Can you go further? Okay. All right, next resolution number six is a resolution in support of New York State Department of Environmental Conservation Regulation of Natural Gas Infrastructure Facilities. Councilwoman McDonough, you could start reading it, but if you get tired, pass, pass it, it over this way. Yep. Can we do it as pre-filed? No, I think Rick. Uh, I don't have a problem with it being uh, pre-filed. Uh, I think that uh, you would pass this at the request of one of the, the residents and the constituents yeah, who had uh, an opportunity to speak about it if you want to give, give it an a, opportunity. A, yes. a broad outline in that term? Yeah. Yeah. And we can yeah. certainly. Okay. Yep. Whereas the Carmel Town Board has a principal responsibility to protect the health and safety of its residents, businesses, and institutions, and whereas the people environment of New York have been increasingly subjected to build out of natural gas infrastructure, including but not limited to pipelines and distribution networks, compressor stations, power plants, combustion heating systems, metering and regulation stations, and pigging stations, and whereas peer-reviewed scientific studies 
link exposures between air pollutants emitted from natural gas infrastructure facilities and neurological, cardiovascular, and respiratory disease, cancer, birth defects, and other adverse health impacts. Acute health impacts from these toxic exposures can cause burning eyes, headaches, breathing difficulties, and nausea for nearby populations and can exasperate health problems. Chronic health impacts can include certain types of cancer as well as damage to lungs, liver, kidneys, reproductive, nervous, and cardiovascular systems. And whereas the American Medical Association and the Medical so Society of the State of New York acknowledge the hazards of natural gas infrastructure and associated adverse health impacts and past resolution in 2015 calling for health impact assessments, I HIAs, and whereas the National Ambient Air Quality Standards are based on average population risks across a large area of over a long period of time, but do not adequately address human toxicity, toxic, toxicity for residents living in close proximity to natural gas infrastructure or where they are subject to episodic high exposures during events such as blowdowns. And whereas current protocols used for assessing compliance with ambient air quality standards do not adequately determine intensity, frequency of durations, frequency or durations of actual human exposures to pollutants and mixtures of pollutants emitted from natural gas infrastructure, noting that periodic 24-hour average measures can underestimate actual exposure by an order of magnitude. And whereas gas infrastructure facilities can emit into the air annually hundreds of tons of pollutants, including toxics, chemicals, and, cri and criteria pollutants, some of which are known carcin carcinogens, like benzene and formal, how do you pronounce that? Formaldehyde, formaldehyde. And can also be sources of radioactive contamination. And whereas people who live or work in close proximity to natural gas infrastructure facilities, such as compressor stations, are most at risk, particularly developing fetuses, children, the elderly, and those with cardiovascular, lung, or respiratory problems, and other vulnerable subpopulations. Although under certain weather and terrain conditions, these pollutants can have a wider impact. And whereas developing fetuses and children are uniquely vulnerable to exposures as they, re as they receive proportionately greater doses of pollutants than adults and have immature organs and detoxification systems. And whereas methane is an extremely potent greenhouse gas with a global warming potential that is 34 times that of carbon dioxide over a 100 year time frame and 86 times that of carbon dioxide dioxide over 20 year time frame. And whereas methane is the primary ingredient of natural gas and leaks at every system stage, including extraction, processing, transmission, distribution, and end use consumption. And whereas the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation regulations do not currently require best available control technology or lowest achievable emissions rate, technology for facilities that are not designed, designated under federal title five requirements are not located within non-attainment areas, although such requirements could substantially reduce hazardous air emissions. And whereas the DEC does not require the use of emission control technologies for all gas infrastructure facilities that would provide a floor of protection and could significantly reduce emissions, even when such technology has become standard practice within the industry or is readily available. And whereas the DEC does not require continuous air monitoring of pollutants or methane in real time for gas infrastructure facilities, even though the technology to do so is now readily available, nor does the DEC require that such data be made available to the public. And whereas the DEC determines compliance with regulatory requirements and permit conditions through self-reporting by the industry without independent verification. And? and? Whereas the DEC does not require rigorous inspection of gas infrastructure facilities to detect and eliminate natural gas leakage at gas infra infrastructure facilities, and whereas the DEC lacks requirements for advancement notification of all planned blowdowns or other chemical releases and for notification immediately following all unplanned blowdowns or other chemical releases in order for residents, public officials, and first responders to take prompt emergency action, and whereas the DEC exempts many emission sources that exist at gas infrastructure sites from regulation requirements and lacks adequate regulatory requirements for non-combustion emission sources. And whereas the DEC does not require a sufficiently protective set of best management practices 
for the gas infrastructure facilities to ensure protection of public health, safety, and the environment. And whereas the DEC does not require the timely replacement or retrofit of technology and the update of site practices for existing gas infrastructure facilities to ensure appropriate consistency with requirements for new projects and adherence to current best management practices, and whereas the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency hosts a voluntary natural gas star program for partner companies to implement technologies and practices for the reduction of methane emissions and document results. And whereas the DEC State Environmental Quality Review, also known as SEEKER, process for gas infrastructure projects does not adequately address greenhouse gases and climate impacts. And whereas the DEC has announced that it intends to rewrite or revise oil and gas regulations which can be more stringent than federal requirements. Therefore, be it resolved that the Town of Carmel Town Board, in the interest of protecting its residents, businesses, and institutions, strongly urges the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, the DEC, to adopt the following regulatory requirements. Installation and use of lowest achievable emission rate, LAER, technology at all new and existing gas infrastructure facilities and emit, that emit pollutants into the environment and including those not designed under federal Title V requirements or not located within non-attainment areas. Inclusion of non-combustion emission sources and emission sources currently considered exempt within the DEC regulatory framework and installation and use of specific emission control technology identified through the Federal National Gas Star Program and elsewhere, including but not limited to dry seals on all centrifugal compressors, automatic air to fuel ratio controls, oxidation catalysts, and selective catalyst, catal catalytic reduction SCR on exhaust stacks, vapors, recovery technology for reciprocating compressors, storage tanks, and other, other sources of fugitive or vented emissions, static seals on reciprocating compressor rods, dry low NOx burners, DNLB, low emission controls, LEC, SCONOX or equivalent technology, zero emission on dehydrants and similar closed system technology, avoiding gas, venting of gas, electrical compressed air starters, electrical compressed air actuators instead of gas operated pneumatic actuators, post combustion particulate matter controls such as electrostatic precipitators, bag houses, and scrubbers. Interior and exterior corrosion protection such as plastic enamel sprays, electric motor compressors where applicable, and implementation of practices identified through the National Gas Star Program and elsewhere to reduce natural gas leakage and blowdowns, including but not limited to maintaining compressors at pipeline pressure, redirecting blowdown gas to local pressure lines, cap testing, use of inert gases at pigging stations, and more aggressive maintenance of packing rings and compressor rods required by existing regulations and installation and use of monitoring equipment at the stack, fence line, and within nearby communities to provide continuous monitoring of pollutants including toxic chemical, chemicals, criteria pollutants, ultra-fine particulate matter, individual VOCs, as well as the methane in real time for all gas infrastructure facilities and such data made readily available to the public such as by online access and on-site verification of compliance or regulatory requirements and permit conditions by independent registered inspectors through scheduled and random visits, and rigorous quarterly inspection by independent registered personnel with regular reports submitted to the DEC and made available to the public to detect and ensure timely elimination of natural gas leaks at gas infrastructure facilities using the compressive detection methods such as aerial and ground level laser methane assessment, organic vapor analyzers, OVAs, toxic vapor analyzers, TVAs, sorbent tubes, SUMA can canisters, infrared cameras, as well as real-time monitoring with Furia Transform Infrared FTIR, spectroscopy and other remote sensing along pipelines, and 48-hour greater advanced notification to any village, trustees, town board, city council, county legislature requesting it all plan at all planned blowdowns, regardless of size, and other chemical releases, notification within 30 minutes of all unplanned blowdowns, regardless of size and other chemical releases at all gas infrastructure facilities and suspension of planned blowdowns or other chemical releases when weather conditions would increase exposure to air and pollutants, pollutants, timely replacement of retrofit technology and updated site practices for existing gas infrastructure facilities to ensure compliance with current regulatory requirements and best management practices and chain of custody records and tracking for all individual waste removed 
from gas infrastructure facilities and strict enforcement of all best management practices and protocols for gas infrastructure facilities to ensure protection of public health, safety, and the environment, and be further resolved that the DEC, in cooperation with the New York State Department of Health, DOH, should uh, promulgate more stringent performance requirements, including not limited to regulated levels of criteria, pollutants to address deficiencies in NAAQS, which fail to consider the human toxicity, toxicity in populations proximate to gas infrastructure facilities and other, any other deficiencies affecting public health, safety, and environment protection. Be it further resolved that the DOH, in cooperation with the DEC, should require and oversee a comprehensive independent health impact assessment, HIA, as outlined in the Centers for Disease Control and National Academy of Sciences, incorporating the late, latest peer review science to be conducted by independent public health and include cumulative short and long-term direct and indirect impacts from all natural gas infrastructure components, emissions, and other operations, including blowdowns, leaks, and spills throughout a thorough analysis of chemical emissions and radioactive contaminants, as well as other concentrations. Persistence and dispersion and the health registry should be established and maintained with all data available to the public. Be it further resolved that the DEC should develop state environmental quality, quality review seeker guidelines guidance to ensure that state agencies adequately address all cumulative impacts, including but not limited to greenhouse gases and climate change during environmental reviews for gas infrastructure projects, and be it further resolved that the Carmel Town Clerk shall forward this resolution to the Governor of the State of New York, Commissioner of the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, Commissioner of the New York State Department of Health, and the New York State Legislature. Uh, I'm out of wind. I offer the resolution is read. Second. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Thank Jerry Rebnitsky. Jerry, for thank you for that. <laughs> letting you read that. I'm exhausted. I'm going to sleep good tonight. I was going to say we should have had Jerry read it. Yeah. <laughs> I offer the resolution is read. Seconded by me, John and Susie. Yep. Roll call vote. Councilman Morelli. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Lubinacci. Yes. Councilwoman McDonough. Yes. Supervisor Schmidt. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. I hope you got all that. I hope everybody <laughs> did. <laughs> um, okay. So that concludes the town board special voting meeting. Tonight, I need a motion to close the meeting. So moved by Councilwoman McDonough. Second. Second by Councilman Lupinacci. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to open the work session. So moved. So moved by Susie. Second. Second by Councilman Lupinacci. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the work session is now open. <coughs> and the first item on you, the work session agenda is review of the town board one. minutes well, of June 6th, 13th, and 20th, 2018. Um, everybody good with the minutes? We'll go on. Mm -hmm. Okay, first item on the work session agenda. Jerry, I'll wait till the end and public comment will be on everything, all right? Um, EMS Administrator Town of Patterson, we got this the other day. Uh, consider request for a letter of support to operate a basic life support response service. Uh, they current, the Town of Patterson created their own uh, EMS Corps. They, they have their own ambulance service now for the Town of Patterson. Originally, um, when they applied for it, they were given a temporary ambulance certificate to operate, and that's been for the past 15 months. Now they must apply to New York State DOH to convert the certificate to permanent status. To that end, the town requests your assistance through a letter of support. So they're asking for a letter of support from all the town boards, and I think the villages in, in Putnam County as well, uh, supporting that, um, that the New York State DOH grant a permanent license to operate emergency medical service in the town of Patterson. Yes. Occasionally they will be called, they'll be called mutual aid or they'll be called to assist other towns in the county. So I think that's why they're reaching out to, to us, the town of Carmel for this, because they may at some point be asked to respond here. So that's why they included, I believe, all the towns that are looking for more support. I don't particularly have a problem with it. Greg, is there any issue with this that you can? It would be a letter of support only if the board is in favor of their recognition as a permanent unit. Yeah. All right. I, I don't have a problem with that. Town board, any, no. anybody have any comments, questions, concerns about this? No, Down no here, problem. Mike, John? Nope. Okay. All right. So we'll do that. We'll grant the letter of support. All right. Next, Mike Carnazza, building codes enforced. We consider request to authorize cleanup of various properties. The other day, Mike uh, gave me a list of three properties that uh, he had requested that we clean up under the property compliance code for the town of Carmel. There were three, it's down to two now. Oh, okay. Because the one, the, one, the one property was cleaned up over the weekend. 
In fact, I stopped by where they were cleaning it up and I asked them to, to please make sure that this is done either on a weekly or every 10 day basis. You know, much, the, the grass was a foot and a half tall, two feet tall, so everything was overgrown. They trimmed everything back, cleaned it up, and they're gonna continue. According to the gentleman I spoke to, it's on his list to do uh, either every week or every 10 days, I believe he said it was. So that one was removed. So we have two on here, uh, 66 Orchard Road. I believe that's in Lake Secor section of town. And 39 McAlpin Avenue is right up the street here. It's, it's as you go around the, the, the historical building in the center of the road, it's the property on the right-hand side as you make the turn to go through the, around the building. The gentleman uh, that owned that house passed away last year. And um, I don't know the status of the property. And, and I, I think right now it's in, it's in an estate and that the state's not caring for the property, so Mike has asked if we can, he's gotten complaints from neighbors that people live in close proximity to that house. It's in really bad shape, it's overgrown. Everything is, it really needs to be, be cleaned up. So that's, those are the two that the building inspector's asking the town board approved to be cleaned up. And then we collect our money back, whatever we paid, there's a lien put on the property, and whenever the pop property transacts, Greg, am I right? the town will be part of that, that judgment or that lien on the property? What happens is, is if the board authorizes the, uh, the cleanup activity, uh, building inspector will send an invoice to the property owner uh, for the, for the uh, cost incurred. If that bill is not paid within 30 days, uh, the building inspector can then file an affidavit with the town clerk to that effect as to what the extent of the work that was done, uh, the cost, the fact that the owner was billed and that no payment has been received yet, and then at the end of 2018, when you send your relevy to the county, um, that may appear on their 2019 local tax, state county town, uh, tax bill. Um, so it's not necessarily waiting for a transaction. It's actually paid on the, it's uh, invoiced on the bill, which if it's not paid, as you know, uh, the, count, the town has its levy satisfied by the county in any event. And then the county Perfect. would go after you, the Greg. homeowner if, if that's the case. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. Any questions, comments, concerns about these uh, property cleanups? We've done them before. No. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Next is uh, James Gilchrist, Director of Recreation and Parks, Eagle Scout candidate, Christopher Nealon. Chris led us in the pledge earlier. This, uh, they're here to discuss Christopher's Boy Scout Troop 371 Con Eagle Scout project. It's a chess table at Chamber Park. Jim? Great. Sounds like it's a wonderful project. Play. Yeah. I don't play chess, so it's going to have to be chess for me. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the board doesn't have pieces, right? It, residents will have to bring their own pieces. Bring a clock if you want. Sit, yeah, exactly. Similar to uh, Bobby Fisher. 
searching for Bobby Fischer. Exactly. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's spectacular. Every place I've ever seen these in any parks, always well received. People out there all the time. Um, so I, th I think it's going to be a great addition. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Spectacular. Oh, wow. okay. You guys have all saw the location? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And in that location, there's no uh, irrigation, and you guys will uh, point there's out irrigation where the. Irrigation and electrical wires throughout the entire park. Okay. Every time we plant a tree, we, we find something. So what we'll do is we're going to turn off the power and obviously the irrigation and dig gently. Nice. I mean, just like in, in the near future, maybe you should think about getting a design down there of where the irrigation is and the electrical. So whenever the projects come, we can kind of say yes or no to with the spots. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I understand for this one, you know, but. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so work with whomever. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's engineering. engineering or, I don't know. Right. Rich is like, no. I, I don't know. Work with somebody to find out where the irrigation is and, and the electrical and map it out so we have it. You know? All right. But All right. thank you, nice, Chris. Nice project, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, next item on the, on the agenda Rich Franzetti, PE, town engineer, consider request to authorize payment. For 2017 invoice to be paid in 2018. Rich? Okay. We have to pay it. Just miss it. Yeah. Just that. Rich, just let them know that they to, to submit these invoices on a more timely manner. You know. Yes, we will. So we can. We can control her and Donna and everybody at the city know how to write it right. Yeah. Like Moving forward, money. if we can put something in the contracts that if yeah. we request, you know, reconciliation and they don't do it and we have to pay them, you know, that there's a penalty to it, like a 5% penalty, that obviously they give us. Is there a deadline for submitting bills? You know, like they have to submit their, their bills within 30 days. And especially if it goes past the... Eight um, months, nine months later. Yeah, the end of year. Okay. Oh, no, 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 I saw you writing. Yep, thank you. Great suggestion. Good. Hey, thanks. I like it. All right. I finally agree with something you said. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Six oh, years. Oh, finally. Six years. Finally. <laughs> oh, I'm on a roll. Good job. You are. You are. Yes, you are. All right, any more questions, comments? The engineer on this item? Nope. Nope. 
being none, the last item is Rich Franzetti also. Consider request to connect to Carmel Sewer District number one, uh, Sewer Main for tax map number 75.12-1-14 and 75.12-1-15. Rich? You want to just go over Mary Ann's uh, email real fast, Gritz, do you have it with you, or, or I can? Uh, Basically, uh, what, what Mary Ann had indicated was the, the I and I project for sewer one and sewer three, that came in um, roughly $400,000 under budget, but we had allocated, we approved up to 996,000, I think it was, for the I and I. Remember we did the sewer line, the lining of the main? That came in way under budget, so, um, Although we can't use that funding for this project, you, you have to, you, you would have to um, borrow, authorize borrowing the funds for this project. Um, you'd have to have a public hearing. Uh, but what Marianne essentially, what she was saying was that the debt was already calculated for sewer one, sewer three in the original borrowing. So it was forecast that a certain amount of debt if we had borrowed the full amount but because it came in under, well uh, under budget by about roughly four hundred and something thousand dollars, four hundred and eighty six thousand dollars, that um, even though it would be debt for sewer one, that debt was anticipated with the original project. So we're under that budget. So essentially if if we borrow, and I think we should, if we borrow to provide access to a sewer main for these two properties, because they've been paying uh, capital costs. They're in the sewer district. They've been paying capital on O&M for 27 years, thinking that they had access to the main if their, if their subsurface sewer septic system failed, they can just get a tap permit and tap into the main. So it's not as easy as that because the main was never run from the corner of Mary Avenue and Route 6 up to to service these two properties. So there, there is there's no main currently that that is accessible by those two properties. It would have to be run up the shoulder of Route 6, allowing them access. So, you know, based on the fact that they, they were part of the original district boundaries when the district was created, they felt that they should be in the district. And the one property owner was of the belief that, that the main was out on Route 6, that they could just easily get a tap permit from the engineering department and tap into the main to access the main. But that's not the case, as Rich explained. The main terminates somewhere over near Mary Avenue and, and Route 6 on the corner by Clark Place. So it would have to be run up the shoulder of the road to access those two properties. Now, it's interesting. The building just past where the second building is, I think it, it was the Gorlick building, I believe, professional building. That's outside of the district. That was never part of the, the sewer district. But these two properties were part of the sewer district. You're telling me the animal hospitals is one of these buildings? It is. The, animal, the Maypac Animal Hospital is one of these buildings, and the building north of it. The yeah. building just passed. Well, I'm it. very familiar with the I building know. north of it. I know. And they've been paying for, since 1991, they've been paying sewer capital costs and, and, and O&M. And you know that too. Because you paid it. <laughs> 
So, you know, in, in, in fairness to those property owners, they're, they're asking now, or, well, they're both asking to access the sewer main, to hook up to it, and I think the right thing to do and the fair thing to do is go ahead with this project, get some estimates, Rich, or, you know, get some... Rich, there's no way of tying in these two buildings on their private property up to that manhole, too? Because there's got to be a lot, a lot more cheaper ways to tie in two buildings. The idea was to put in an eight-inch line along Route Six. Yeah, so I mean you're doing it the right way, but it's only for tying two buildings. I mean, do you really need an eight-inch line? But the eight-inch line theoretically could be tied into some other you know, buildings if they wanted to tie in themselves and rather just to take the sewers themselves to get in. The eight-inch line affords that other people to get into the sewer system, which is why you would do it. Rich, how did, how did the, one, the one property that's at the bottom of Mary Avenue, I think it was a tile place yeah. that sold tiles? Strictly tile. It's still how, how did they, they're connected to the main. How did they, 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 how did they? Their line runs, my understanding from the drawing, they run to that manhole. They discharge into that. It's right there. It's 20 feet off the manhole. So it's, they just ran a lateral to the manhole. These, the yellow line is proposed where the line's going to go, so there's no manhole in front of Strictly Tile now. They cut across right. Mary Hill and hook up in front of the old record shop. Liquor store, maybe for other people who don't remember the record shop. Yeah. Okay, so they, they actually cut under Mary right now. This is going to extend an eight inch line down another 400 plus feet? Right, get, get those two properties in. Okay. And I, while it is pretty expensive, Mike, I 100% agree it's pretty expensive for two properties. If we're talking about the future expansion of Sewer District 1, trying to negotiate things with the city, and our entire intent is to continue down Route 6. That was, that was my thought, John. Yeah, might as well, you know, it, it does stink. Two how properties we, for 170 is a lot of money, right, but a lot of money. How, for the how future. How do we leave with the city of New York? When are they supposed to get back to us? I mean, that, they were supposed to come back to us, right? Yeah, they're coming back to us. With a proposal. Yeah, yeah they're coming back to us. I mean, it's not going to cost us anything to go out to, to see what this is going to be, but it's... Uh, One of them, one of them, Mike has. A, they're having issues with their with their septic system. They, they, yeah, the big one. Yeah, that's got to be. Yeah. I'm very familiar with the other building. Yep, I don't know where the. Yeah, this, this and one, if this, this is having issues, there's a lot cheaper ways of tying into manhole too, from this building, than 170 thousand no dollars. Excuse me. Oh, okay. So manhole, manhole at Mary's the only is only one there. Okay, how about manhole at Mary? No, no, that, that, none of those exist. Those then, are all proposed. Then you're right. Because you have to have the run of manhole. It's not, a lot, it's not a lot of money, then. From, from Mike, from this one here, this manhole. I got you. Here. There's only one manhole there, right at the corner of Park Avenue. Right on the sidewalk there. And it's called manhole 100 time. So well, we have to do it. I mean, they're in the district. They're in the district. They're they're paid for the years. And, and, and that's what I was, uh, my question, you alluded to it. Um, but just to even to repeat so that for, for the residents of sewer district number one and even residents watching TV, they're probably hearing $170,000 for, for two residents. Why is the whole district going to have to pay? And the reason is because they have been paying O&M and capital tax as if they were already connected for the last 27 years. Right. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. They, they are within the district boundaries. They're not benefited by a main, so they shouldn't be paying capital at the very least. It's upon the owner to apply for the reduction of the capital units to zero if they're not benefited by a main. Um, my understanding is they've both been paying. But what you'd have to do is have a borrowing for the increase and improvement of the facilities of Carmel Sewer District Number 1. You have a map plan and report, and you can borrow up to the amount, and then obviously that authorizes the uh, the general municipal law, the procurement of the of the, the work and the like. And the cost from their building to the main that, that would be new, that would be on the tax, on that specific We're not taxpayer. going to, uh, town won't install, install the lateral. The district won't install the connection. We, 
the main, the eight-inch main that's the going to be in this from, region. From the main to, to the connections building. on the, the connections on the owner. Can I, yeah, but services. But this on is on everybody. Sure. The, the yellow, the main is on everyone, but going from the. I just hate to, to spend this and and cost the taxpayers in this district, and I am Agreed. one of them. Agreed. The hundred seventy thousand when we don't know where the city is going to come back to us with. So I mean, run them side by side. We'll send get, get the numbers for it, see what happens, and reach out to the city and see. Agreed. How long before they get back to us? If you're inclined to do it, authorize the borrowing. That's the first step. And then if you take another tack, you can always not go forward with the actual borrowing or the issuance of the of the of the van notes. Right. Uh, Rich, can you clarify the two commercial plazas and the paint store? Um, they're all within the district as well, is that correct? Um, are they t tapped in, or this will give them the opportunity now to tap in? They're, they're in the district. Their main goal is near the liquor store, which is essentially across the street from the other main hall that we have tied into. How is Wall Hour tied in then? They have a lateral that goes into that main hall, similar to the way the tile place has a lateral that goes into the main hall on the other side of the street. So they so can't go not, across the street and tie in, or, or no, it's not big not, enough? Well, I mean, if there was a main hall across, directly across the street from these guys, we that's what I'm saying. How does he get in there? So, we're, Rich, on, on the opposite side of the street, where where is the, uh, the main the main end? It's a little further down. It's, it's in front of the liquor store in there. Okay. Where the seafood is in that grass area there. All right. So there's a lateral from Wall Hour to that main. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Back in the day, you know, Merlino probably had something run some yeah. before that before that store was built. Yeah. Knowing the next door neighbor. Yeah. When it was easy to do things. Yeah. Yep. You're right. You know. Rich, would you be able to research those alternatives and see if there is going to be a less expensive way? I mean, I'm okay authorizing the borrowing, but I'd like to have all the information before actually going through and taking yeah. taking money into hand and start paying debt on it. Yeah. Who, who owns the wall that will ladder? I'm sorry. I, I, who owns the wall? Who owns the wall that will lateral, considering it goes over three six? Three sections of property. Do all hours, I don't know that. I, not the town, I don't know. That's a strange one. That is. I mean, I, 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 do, I can double check the drawings on that. We're going to have to double check the drawings on that. So you're not telling me that. the liquor store has to tie into that lateral too? Well, no, the liquor store has a manhole proximate to it. They tie right into the main. The main is further down. So it's so What I'm saying is the, the lateral that goes to the manhole in front of the liquor store, if the district owns it, we could just bore straight across and put in one manhole instead of three and go 100 feet instead of 600 feet. It makes it a main. Well, that's, that's what I'm asking. I don't know what's over there. My, I, I'd have to research that. I don't have the answer okay. for you to that, but I can certainly get back to the board on what is there, if there are any records or whatever. Yeah, I'd just like to make sure there's not an eight inch right across the street before we. <laughs> I, I, agree with, I agree with you, but we know that that manhole is too far down to do that. And you're still dealing with the New York State DOT and what you can do with their right of way or with. This is Wall Hour. That's Wall Hour. That's the store. The seafood place. And that's the, uh, the mess. And the man has the man hole is right here. And he goes all the way over to here to this man hole right there. On that side of the street. You don't see the man hole on that side of the street. So, Rich, you. How long do you think it'll take for you to research that um, paint store is lateral and the uh, alternatives that may exist from just doing 400 plus feet of an eight inch pipe? I mean, I'll look at it over the next few days. I'm on vacation over the next week, so I will, you know, I will look at it. I'll have to look at it at the office and see what we got. I don't know what we have record wise. Okay.
Maybe, Sounds great. Maybe check with us with uh, Infomar also. Maybe they'll have records of it, Rich. I don't know. Uh, I will certainly check that. Out. Okay. Uh, my guess is they have what we give them, but I will certainly check. Okay. If they have any of on the site, I don't forward any of the information. Because it would be nice, as Councilman Borelli stated, that if there was a larger diameter lateral running that way, it would be a lot easier boring. Yeah. You want while Rich is researching this, do you want to um, do a resolution authorizing the borrowing? It'd still be okay authorizing because even if it comes back, so that'll only be half borrowing. of it. Right. We can always uh, just say we're only going to borrow this much. Right. But at least we'll be authorized to the limit. Mike, you are okay with that? I'm sorry, I didn't. An hear. authorizing resolution yeah, borrowing the money? Yeah, okay, I'll write them side okay. by side. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Map plan and report needs map to go plan. along with it. Map, map plan and report. It doesn't have to be voluminous, but there has to be. Engineering? Yep. All right, Rich, can we take care of that? So we have some of the information here with regard to what we do for a map plan and report. It's not 100%, but we certainly have some of the information. Thank you, Rich. Am I good? Thank you. All right, thanks, Rich. Enjoy your time away. Thanks, Rich. All right. Okay, that, that concludes the um, town board work session for this evening. Is there any members of the public that would like to come up and comment? You can comment either on the voting meeting or the work session items. Either, either meeting, sorry. Because we went right through from the voting meeting. All right, uh, Jerry Rovnitsky. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Susie and Ken for taking on the monumental task of reading that resolution <laughs> and for the town board members for supporting it. More Ken than Susie. <coughs> what? I'm sorry. Said more ahead. him than I me. Said more Ken than Susie, but yeah. I knew I was going to get a slap in the arm. Yeah. Uh, I, I uh, just wanted to mention that uh, there were a number of uh, experts that were consulted before this was finalized. There were numerous drafts, probably at least 15, 20 drafts before we finalized this, but we had experts uh, in pipelines, in nuclear uh, science, uh, in uh, engineering, uh, and uh, physicists working on this, and uh, finally we were able to come to an agreement where everyone agreed that this was the best we can come up with. Good. Uh, I did want to add something. Um, I don't know if uh, you're aware that the uh, pipeline uh, safety study, the risk assessment, uh, has been released, although they didn't release the entire uh, report. They released what they're calling an executive summary, and they said that they can't release the entire report because it would be uh, too dangerous uh, for anyone to have that kind of information. I guess they were figuring they could be terrorists or whatever. And it, uh, but they did release a, a summary. And um, from, from the summary, uh, four state agencies, uh, uh, Homeland Security and Emergency Services Department of Public Service, Environmental Conservation, and Health Department issued a letter to Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, uh, and uh, they addressed some of the concerns within that study. And uh, they are, in essence, really blaming FERC for a lot of the problems but they are saying they need to take action to make it safer, that it's uh, uh, very safe. Now, you may remember that a risk assessment was originally requested about five years ago by uh, the uh, SAPE organization, um, and we uh, tried to get them to do the risk assessment before they approved it, 
and they refused. The DEC approved it without uh, doing a risk assessment, and FERC also did not do it. Now they're finding out they should have done it, and it was extre extremely risky. Uh, there are risks uh, not only from the 42-inch high-pressure pipeline that they installed and put across the Hudson, but there's two other pipelines in Indian Point. Uh, under, they, I believe they are both under uh, the nuclear plant. They built right over the pipeline when they built the plant. Uh, nowadays, they wouldn't have allowed it, but they did then. And they're saying there's also danger because those are old pipes and they may not last that much longer. We don't know what's going to happen if they break and cause an explosion. Um, and uh, they said that uh, FERC needs to monitor this uh, to check on it regularly uh, because uh, the company claimed that they can shut off the gas within three minutes of an explosion. Uh, I don't think that has ever happened any place in the United States. Anytime there's been explosions, it's usually taken them about an hour or two or more sometimes to shut off the flow of gas. Um, so there, the state is now saying uh, you need to do regu uh, regular inspections to make sure that that is possible. Uh, and there are a number of other things uh, uh, there's also the danger from uh, earthquakes. Uh, there are two seismic faults very close to Indian Point. And uh, if the, uh, the uh, scientists have said they really don't know when there might be an earthquake in that area. Uh, it could be uh, years from now. It could be tomorrow. They don't, really don't know. Uh, but if there was an earthquake, it would be another significant danger. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, as I had mentioned previously, if there was a meltdown there, it would be a lot worse than happened at Fukushima. Uh, and many of the uh, meltdowns they've had at other places are still causing problems uh, many, many years after. The, when they first did the experiments and... Uh, in, in the Pacific before they even released, uh, before they bombed uh, uh, Hiroshima, uh, they told the people there that this would be only temporary. They'd have to leave temporarily and then they can go back. Well, they still can't go back. Uh, it's still too radioactive for the people to go back. Can you read that? So uh, radioactivity is really very significant. If, um, and. Uh, uh, I'm glad that they're finally taking action, even though they should have done it five years ago and not approved it. But okay. you know, you have to deal with what what is. And yeah. I appreciate uh, the help from the town board. And there are uh, towns now in upstate New York that have it on their agenda. And one of them, I believe, had indicated they will be approving it, and others are uh, considering it now because we have other environmental groups that we've been working with Good. and they're presenting it to Good. their Thanks, areas. Jerry. Great. So okay. Thank you very Great. much. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Jerry. Jerry. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak? This is the open forum, new business portion of the meeting. Sir, did you have something? I would just like to introduce myself. I'm new to the neighborhood. Is that all right? Sure. Oh. Go right uh, my name's yeah. Neil Dalton. I'm from Long Island and uh, I just want to say I like what I see. Uh, the open discussions and uh, you guys actually care about the town and uh, you know just spending our money free will I uh, I appreciate that um, I did want to know about this uh, distillery uh, they're talking about I, I moved on Seminary Hill Road and uh, I was wondering when that public forum will be uh, discussed that matter well, the pl it's, the, it, it's before the planning board now so they're, they're reviewing their application they did that Greg, last week if I'm not mistaken yeah I, I think okay. there's going to be a, a public oh, wait, hearing which, and there was not a rich set okay, oh, okay. with me now before tonight, there wasn't one, so I think. Is it there at the zoning board tomorrow evening, so there's an option for public hearing before the zoning board to be uh, what's going on there. After they get that, if they get the zoning board approval and then it's report back to the planning board, mm -hmm. it's the second, it'll be the second meeting in uh, July that they'll have a public hearing. So 
So you get two shots at a public hearing. Come There's one tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. At the zoning board. In, in this room right, right here. here. Right here. Tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night Around in this room. probably 7. Right? Thir the meeting from 7. Yeah. He starts at 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. Meeting in July. Yeah. 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 I know. Wherever our next uh, work session is here, same night as that, or the They're going to be out for a while. So keep an eye on the web page for All right. that. Or call us uh, at the office and we'll, we'll let you know what's going on. All right. I appreciate it. Welcome Thank to Carmel. Thank you. Welcome to the town. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome to the hammock. You can get these. I have All a right. uh, recycle notice for residents, uh, very important, and uh, I think, Bob, uh, this was submitted uh, to you from the Black News. Um, again, it's a recycle notice for the residents. This is for the recycling, the papers, and the uh, um, soda cans and uh, plastic bottles. Our garbage collector okay. collection contractor, AAA, has indicated that the facilities where they deposit recycling will no longer be accepting items that are bagged, meaning that if you put all your cans into a blue bag, a blue recycling bag, um, the facility is not accepting those bags anymore. It's extra work. In an, in an effect, uh, effort to assist, we are asking that you simply place your recyclables into the blue tote uh, provided by the contractor uh, without using any plastic bags. Um, so you know there is no need to sort your materials. They will pl be placed in the uh, tote commingled. So that big blue container, you could just dump your papers, uh, your cans, your bottles right in. They dump it into the truck and then they bring it to the facility where the facility sorts it and that facility doesn't want anything bagged. Um, should help you out also because now you just take the individual uh, components and put them in the bat uh, into the tote as opposed to the bag. So um, please no longer use the uh, blue uh, or any type of recycling bag to hold your bottles. Great. Thanks, John. Yep. Appreciate it. Mike, you want? Is that it? So no, we, well, we have a couple more down here. So you want to go go last then, Mike? Go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Jonathan, did you have anything? No, I'm good. All right, Susie. Okay. The Red Mills Historic Park Independence Day concert is sponsored by the M Tompkins Mahopack yeah. Bank. It's going to be Wednesday, July 4th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The rain date is Thursday, July 5th, but it's going to be beautiful, so it'll be July 4th. And it will be at the Red Mills Historic Park, which is in Mahopack Falls. The musical entertainment is by the Norm Hathaway Big Band mm -hmm. and reenactment performance so by the 2nd New York Regiment Brigade of the American Revolution. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really a nice time. Uh, the concert's free. Bring a blanket or chair. There is limited parking down there. So for further information, call Mary McDonald, the Town of Carmel Historian, at 845-628-1500, or Alan Warnicke, the Chairman of Red Mills, the Historic District Committee, 845-628-5705. So um, again, uh, July 4th for 6:30 at the um, down there at the Red Mills Red Historic Mills Park. Park. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah. 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 It's a nice event. It really yep. is. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Susie. Um, I just have one announcement. Uh, due to the Independence Day, next Wednesday, July 4th, the town board meeting is moved to Tuesday, July 3rd. So we're meeting next Tuesday, July 3rd here for a uh, town board voting meeting at 7 p.m. instead of Wednesday. The town hall is closed on Wednesday, July 4th. So if you showed up here, the building's gonna be closed. So the meeting's moved to Tuesday, July 3rd, 7 p.m. and we're closed on the 4th. We'll reopen on Thursday, uh, regular time, 8.30 from normal business hours on Thursday. Okay, Mike, yeah, you have an announcement? A uh, couple things. The one that I, I, the board hopes that the entire town has seen as of now is we worked uh, hard to get everybody into Swan Cove at the same time so it didn't drag out. We were hoping to have a two, three day project and it was a lot harder and a lot larger than we thought. But I wanna publicly thank a couple of people. The board would like to publicly thank a couple of people. Mike's Blue Wheel service for, the provi for providing the dumpsters uh, Bria for allowing us to jump the line because we had so many dumpsters. And uh, Mike provided it at cost with a tremendous savings to the town. And when, when he saw we backed up with dumpsters because we couldn't get back and forth to the dump fast enough, he came over personally with his uh, big dump truck 
and for two days stay there with the dump truck. So the savings for Mike's Blue Wheel was going to be phen phenomenal. The big one are the large machines that were provided by the Ferrari family. And as they said it to me when they were there, and I almost could quote this, it's a small token of their, their, appre their family's appreciation for the love and help that this community has been showing them. And to remind everybody, they still need the love, the hope, and the prayers because there are still two of their children missing in Idaho. They were there for almost a week, and I told them it was going to be a two-day project. They put back their business, and they probably saved the town $100,000 or better. They had an excavator there, a large one and a small one, a dump truck, and they were there for a solid week. So to the Ferrari family, we tip our hat to you. Um, I can't leave out my partner, who at his advanced age, stayed on a machine five days straight, assisting them <laughs> and crushing the dumpsters. So uh, to Tommy, thank you. But um, that's the first phase of the project. The second phase is another cleanup in a couple of weeks with the fences being removed, the trees being trimmed, and the view should almost double from what you see now. In the last two days, and nobody on the board even knows this, so I'm, I'm telling you now, um, I got all the uh, plans and the proposals that we gave Mayapac National Bank, and I gave them to, two, to three professional designers, and they're gonna get back to us within a week with their proposals, and with that, we'll pick one, uh, give it to the bank, and move into our second phase. And at that time, we'll notify the chamber and all the, the volunteer organizations in that building how much time they have, and they're gonna have plenty of time. But right now, the, um, the first phase is done. I wanna thank Mike, Mikey Blue Wheel, Tommy Boniello, and especially the Ferrari family. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And Mike, I wanna thank you for uh, your efforts in coordinating that whole uh, project down there. You were there every day. It was longer than I thought. We, I really thought it. two or three days. Yeah. We had a, you know, we had an over and under pool and everybody lost. I figured eight to 12 dumpsters. My partner says I'm crazy. 12 to 14 dumpsters. The Ferrari says we're all crazy. 18 dumpsters. I think we pushed about 22 to 25 dumpsters. It was, and they crushed it. Those dumpsters were full. They were full, and the dump truck was running too. And the dump truck was running two days straight. Straight, so straight. Twenty-two to twenty-two containers, and, and I don't know truck. how many loads yeah. with the dump truck. And the dump so truck. It, it was a lot. It was quite a bit, but it came out nice. Yeah, Actually, when you're sitting at six N now, looking over that way, you see that beautiful tree yep. in the center of the property on the lakeshore. Yeah, we have beautiful. a couple. I have a couple of tree guys that are going to volunteer their time to shape that tree, pick it up a little bit, and cut the dead stuff out, and. Um, Tommy will spread the millings that we had stored there. And uh, we might need another three, four, maybe six loads of millings, and um, we can get that from the stockpile from the Route 6 project. So at no cost to the taxpayers. Right. Mike, I just want to mention I did speak with Paleen Construction. They said take as much as take you as want. Take as much as we want. Take as much as you want, as much as you need uh, for, your, for your project. So the offer's there. It's, this is from the Route 6 milling project up in Carmel, yeah. from the library to 312. It's stockpiled somewhere over in Brewster. They, they said, take as much as you need. So, great. great. All right. Thanks. Thanks again, Mike, for all of that. And that's it, all we have for tonight. Um, we do not have executive session, so uh, we're going to close the meeting right from here. We're all going to go home, and uh, we'll meet here next Tuesday at 7 p.m. for a voting meeting. Oh, wait a second. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. We wait. have a special Whoa, thing. Whoa, we got something else going on Someone's here, huh? Someone's birthday. Wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whose birthday is it, John? Councilman, Councilman Lupinacci, uh, it's his birthday, birthday today. today. Happy birthday, John. Thank you. Councilman, Thank you. cannoli cake. No one say how old. No, nobody's going to say how old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Really? Thank I, you so much. Oh, well, we got to say happy birthday. I think it's 40 because there's four candles. Yeah. Like that. Oh, Let him think. And it. get two more candles. I mean, uh, <laughs> just kidding, John. Uh, ha I, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear John. Happy birthday to you. Vinny, I hope you, I hope Dad, I hope you're watching. Vinny, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're laughing. No, he's gonna text me, bring me home a slice of cake. I'm gonna only cake, yeah. Happy birthday, John. Thanks Thank again. You. Thanks, Ann. Taking care of that. Appreciate it. So um, that's it. The meeting's over. I need a motion to close the meeting. So moved. So moved by Councilman McDonough, seconded by Councilman Lupinacci. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Be well. See you next time.